Hello everyone, Professor Todd Giles here. This is going to be a video explaining and demonstrating how to do the Project 3 photo edits. I'm spending a lot of time in class teaching you about the tools and how to do things and techniques, but as we have this assignment here, I really haven't had a chance to run through the process with you. So I want to do that on video. So what I'm going to be doing is just doing image one, demonstrating how to go through the whole process. As always with Photoshop, what I'll be showing you may not be the only way to do anything. Usually there are multiple ways to change levels, to change exposure, change tone. What I'm going to do is have our assignment down here to the side so I can look at it and reference. And then I will be working in Photoshop here and then I'll be showing and working on this image right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Three families went to the beach a few years ago. And this was on an afternoon that was very cloudy. This image that I took with my DSLR is just very gray. So it needs to be improved through exposure and then some other techniques just to give it a little bit more life. First thing that we do always after we open it up is make a copy of the background and I can shut it off. That will become very handy for a before and after view. So what we need to do here, we need to make this image six by eight at 300 PPI pixels per inch, and then change its mode to CMYK because right now we're at RGB. Now, one thing about this mode, even though it's on the first line here, we will edit on screen in RGB because that's the native mode for the screen is RGB. It'll be more accurate to do that. Then at the end, we'll come in and change the mode to CMYK. So the first thing we need to do is change the size to eight by six. So what I'm going to do is go to image, image size, or command option, which is this right here, command option I, and it will give me this window. It tells us that it's 72 inches by 48 inches, which is six feet by four feet. That's huge, but it's low resolution, only at 72 pixels per inch. Now we need to change that to 300 and we need to change this to eight by six. So if you make this eight, it does change it automatically. That changes the height automatically because I have the chain linked here. It's on. I can click on that and shut it off at any time, but we do want it on. So let me go back, make it eight. So the height is not quite six. So I will need to change that to six. Now all I need to do, instead of adding to the photo, I can just take away and subtract from the photograph here. And then I'm going to make it 300. And look what happens. It goes from 51 meg to 13.9 meg because it is so much smaller, but it's also higher resolution. This will be a great photo. So then I'm going to hit OK. Another thing about this information, 300 pixels per inch is the minimum resolution for printing, as in printing a picture in a textbook or a poster, anything that's done with modern printing today, professional printing. And also CMYK tells us that's for professional printing because cyan, magenta, yellow, and black are the process colors uh, for process printing. So here's our image. And if we go to properties, we see it's nine by six. How do I get it to eight by six? Well, one way to do that would be to do cropping. Notice that it gives us a little window there that shows how big 
that window is going to be. Now, because I'm sliding it, it's going to be a little bit hard to make it exactly 8 by 6. It just keeps sliding right by, and whether you have a good mouse, there it is. I do have it now, and I hit return, go to properties, and there it is, 6 by 8. Now I'm going to hit undo to show you a different way of doing it. Go to image, canvas size, and it brings up another window. See, we're back to 9 by 6. Important to know what this is. Um, right now, our anchor, which is in the white dot right here, is in the very middle. So if I want to make this into 8, that means, and notice the arrows changed to be very, it's contracting to be smaller. The arrows pointing in means this image will be smaller. If they, if we make this like 12, they'll aim out, meaning we're making it bigger. And it's just a visual communication to let us know what we're doing. So 8 will be making it smaller, not in height, because we already have that as 6, but as 8 going from 9. So what this will do is take in the difference. Our difference here is between 9 and 8 is 1 inch. That means it will take in everything and shrink it towards the middle. So it will cut off half an inch on one side and half an inch on the other. If we move this dot by clicking into another row here, now it will only take off from the right side. It will take off one inch. Or we can click over here and it will click or cut off one inch on the left side. That's something to understand so that when you're creating your compositions, you know which side will be deleted. I'm going to be working with the young man, putting him in a point of interest. So I want this to cut off of the left side. So I'm going to leave it right here. Hit OK. And it will give me a little warning. I can hit Don't Show Again if I don't want to see this. So here's my new composition. I'm going to go back to cropping, and I want to put the young man in a point of interest. So I'm just grabbing and clicking here. Notice that it gives me the area here that's been cut off. It lets me see it, although this is my canvas at the moment. But I want this young man to be here, and I want to keep the horizon right where it is on this line so that our rule of thirds will allow this photograph to look much, much better compositionally. So what I'm going to do is click on a corner. I want the same proportions. So what I'm going to do is grab a corner and hold down shift so it keeps the proportions. And it's moving the boy up towards or down towards that spot, but it's moving the horizon. So if I keep the horizon above and then I move this, uh, that's getting a little bit closer. I put him right on that sign. Okay, there we go. Now notice the horizon is not exactly horizontal. So what I'm going to do is click and hold outside of this area right here on the corner, and I can rotate my image. So I'm going to rotate the image. This is something that the lens has created. It looks like there's curvature of the earth. We cannot see the curvature of the earth, but it will be right on that side. Okay, so I'm going to hit return, or I can hit the check mark. So there's my new composition. But because I cropped it, if I go back to my properties, look at that. It's not what it needs to be. So the easiest thing to do is come here, image size, put in 8. Ah, oh, we're off by just a little bit. I think that's within tolerance. And hit OK. And it will go through the process. 
and now we have an image that's six by eight. And we can look at that underneath properties, and there it is, six by eight. So if we go back to our assignment, we've done six by eight, 300. We'll wait on CMYK. So now we're going to work with exposure, working with the black point, the white point, and the middle values to get a better image here. <clears throat> what we want to do here is go to image, adjust, levels is one way to do it, or just do command L and it will give you the levels. So I put this off to the side. Now I want to make sure that I explain what this is. Um, this is a huge mystery to people if they haven't seen this before. Imagine that this area is a representation of every pixel within this image, not where it is placed, but its value, light and dark and with color if we change the different channels. So on the left end is black and we on the output levels we can see that. On the, this far end is absolute black. On the other side, on the right side, is absolute white. And then it's a gradation in between. So let's interpret this. That imagine that this width is divided into 256 stacks or potential stacks of pixels. And each stack represents one level of darkness or lightness from dark to light. Because the left end is black, black, black. If we look at this, there is barely any black, but there's a little bit right there. If we go to the other side, there is no pixels that are pure white. In fact, they go back all the way to here, so it's a little bit of gray but it's not pure white. And then in the middle, all of these peaks represent stacks of pixels that represent all the gray values. So if we want to work with our contrast a little bit and make this picture better, what we can do is move these sliders. Notice that the black slider, when it moves over, the image gets darker and darker. That means everything from this point and to the left within these stacks now become solid black. Okay, so if we move the black point over, it's making everything darker. The white point, if we move it over to the left, everything to the right of that point now becomes white, pure white. So we can move that all the way over and we can edit that way. And then the gray point is just using these midpoints, these grays, to work with contrast and how everything works together um, to have a good contrast, a better image that way. So what we can do, and this is a traditional way of doing it, is moving the sliders, just using your eye of moving just into some of the pixels that are starting to become black and go right about there. Now it's going to look too dark right now, but wait just a second. Then we grab this over, the white point, and we bring it over to where it starts creating white. That looks a little bit better, but then the magic happens with the midtones. We can move the gray point back and forth to be able to get to a good contrast, but still detail within our image. And it's right about there. Now, I think I'm going to brighten it up a little bit more. But the problem is that if we watch the clouds, it may get blown out a little bit with that. And there's a couple remedies that we can do. I'm going to go ahead and leave it right about here and hit OK. And then what I'm going to do is draw a box 
here. Basically, it's the sky. And I'm going to do the same thing. Go to Levels. And bring up the dark point to be able to have some contrast here, light to dark. I'm not going to blow out any of the whites. I'm going to bring it in like that. It is a cloudy day, but we want to see some detail and get some blue in there. Now, I could go up here and use the blue out of the RGB, and you'll notice that what happens if I do that, it just changes the color quite a bit. Now, I can play with it, and what it's doing is either subtracting or um, notice there's a lot of blue on the lighter end, but not a lot of blue over here. If I move it over, it's going to really take away the blue, and it destroys the blueness of it. So try not to do that unless you really understand more about RGB. So I'm going to hit OK. Now, here's something interesting. I have that selection. Now I want to do below that. I'm going to go to Select and hit Inverse. And now it selects everything else on the page. I'm going to go back to Levels. And now the sky will stay the same, and I'll just be working with the ocean. I want to keep the dark about the same. Bring this over. So it brightens it up just a little bit more. Hit OK and click off on it. And we do have a little bit of that dark right there, but of course, when you do your project, you'll be much more careful than me in this demonstration. So that takes care of the exposure. So it's much better. Let's take a look at it. First, edit it. Beginning how we are now. So it looks much, much better. Now the next thing that we need to do is correct some dust or freckles or hair. Just make the image better. Now, there's not a whole lot wrong with this. We can't see freckles, but let's get rid of some of the footsteps here and maybe some of the bubbles. Now, we can use many of these tools right here, the healing tools, like the healing spot brush, the healing, come on, the healing brush. I like the stamp tool quite a bit, but the one that's going to help us here, I think is just going to be the spot healing brush because we don't need to actually pick from one part to go to another part. So I'm just going to sweep on top of that and it's gone. And here's something that's gone. Here's something that's gone. Here's something is gone. It's gone. Um, even the bubbles will start going away if I do this. Um, even some of the clouds, if I, I don't like that cloud right there, get rid of it. Um, this cloud coming in from the edge, don't like it, get rid of it. It's letting Adobe look at that area, what's something similar, but we'll get rid of that. That pretty much does it. We've done a little bit of correction and to make it better. Now, I do see something here that I want to work with, and that's making the sand a little bit more brown. So what I'm going to do is go to Quick Select Tool, and I'm just going to collect it right here and sweep across, and then it's going to jump ahead of me. Then I'm going to go up to Image, Adjust, Hue and Saturation, and it gives us this window. I want to bring up the brown, so I'm going to give it a little bit more vibrancy in the saturation. And notice I can see a little bit of the skin tone show up here where it wasn't before. That versus, now we don't want to go too far with it. And then 
We can work with lightness maybe a little bit, but really we need a little bit more brown. So what we can do is grab the hue slider and it's really not going to do that. So I'm going to hit cancel. I'm going to go back to image adjustments. Let's work with color balance. Now this one we need to be careful on. Notice it's we can move towards cyan or towards red, towards magenta, or towards green, towards yellow, towards blue, and you'll see what it does to it. Um, also, we can see the colors here, and we see a preview. If we move that slider over, it's going to be that color, and I see it's more of a brown. When I bring that over, it's going to be more of a brown. Um, I'll bring some Try a different tone there. Um, the shadows, we can do shadows, highlights, or middle tones. Let's bring it a little bit more into the shadows. And bring it back towards the yellow a little bit. And here's our preview. So it's giving a little bit more yellow into it and more brown. Okay, so we're going to hit Okay, and that's going to be, now we can click off on it, and I think that looks much better. So we have a little bit more brown, we have more blue in the sky, a little bit more blue in the ocean, and here's our preview beginning and end between those two. So I think it's much, much, much better. The only thing I don't like is the detail on his clothing, which we could go in and change if we wanted to, but I'm not going to. So if we go back to our assignment, we need to save it as a TIFF. Now, most important here is along the way, and I haven't done this yet, is to save as a Photoshop document. Saving it as a Photoshop document here under Format will save the layers, and now we can go in and work with it a little bit at another time. If we had 25 different layers, it's really nice to have that. This, I only have a couple layers, but we're going to go ahead and name it this. Uh, let me just name it uh, Demo Project 1, copy. I'm going to take off TIFF because that's what the, that other one is. It'll be a Photoshop document, and I see the name of it up here now. PSD is Photoshop. The last thing that we need to do on the editing side is change it from RGB to CMYK. And this is an easy thing to do. Go to Image, Mode, CMYK. We don't want to flatten. We still want to have our layers, so hit Don't don't flatten, don't worry about that other window that pops up, just hit OK. And now we see we're in CMYK, and now we can go into the process of making our TIFF. Now we can do our final save, and we do a copy, because doing a copy allows us to select TIFF, and we get to turn off layers. So what we're doing is combining all the layers that we can see here down into one layer because if I have those 25 layers that I talked about, all of those layers take up a little bit of memory and this would be an absolutely huge memory size document. So we turn off the layers and now we'll just have that one layer on our image. Yeah, TIFF, hit save. Now it will give us this. Um, just to understand what this is. The TIFF is a compressed image file, and the compression scheme is called LZW. We can do either none, which it won't compress it at all, or we can do a zip. And it really doesn't matter, but the natural compression is LZW. So I just leave it. Don't worry about pixel order. But here on byte order, if you're working on IBM 
uh, PCs, go ahead and hit that. If you're working on Macintosh like we are in the lab, hit that. And then hit OK. Go through the process. Notice this is still a PSD because we saved a copy and we know where we saved it. It is right here. So there's, I'll do a quick view and there's our image and I know where it is and now I can go ahead and do the process to submit it. So that takes you, you all the way through the process. I'm doing it and talking and showing you everything going on at the same time and it's a little over um, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. You should be able to do it much quicker once you get into the process. I'll leave it at that and if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.